Good evening. Um, literature at Kalaghora this year is all about crossing boundaries, recognizing the porosity of the differences between us and of making it possible to have conversations. Really very, very pleased to have with us today, Swiss Romanian author, there already we have some border crossing, um, Swiss Romanian author, Dana Grigorciu, who is going to be in conversation with Jyoti Sabarwal from the University of Delhi. We are extremely grateful that this is brought to us by the uh, Embassy of Switzerland in uh, India, the Consulate General of Switzerland in Mumbai, Swiss Next India, the Consulate General of Switzerland in Bangalore, and as always, Pro Helvetia New Delhi, the Swiss Arts Council. Thank you very much. Over to you, Dana and Jyoti. Thank you, uh, Indira Chandrasekhar. Thanks for this very warm and kind welcome. Uh, dear members of the audience, uh, now uh, let me welcome you to the first event in the series of the Swiss Literary Days hosted in virtual space under the ages of the Kalaghora Art Festival, which is being held in Mumbai annually for more than two decades now. Now, the honor of being the first writer in this series goes to the very prolific and charming Dana Grigorcia, a Swiss-German writer of Romanian origin. Besides being a novelist, she is also an essayist and children's book author living in Zurich. After studying in Belgium, Germany and Austria, Dana moved to Switzerland. Her essays have appeared in newspapers across Europe, and her novels have been translated into several languages. Her 2011 debut novel, Baba Rada, won the Swiss Literary Pearl. Thereafter, she was awarded the Three Sat Prize in Klagenfurt at the 2015 Ingeborg Bachmann competition for her novel, An Instinctive Feeling of Innocence, the uh, text she will be reading from today. Dana has worked as a journalist in Vienna, Bonn and Strasbourg. She was a lecturer too of film at Zürcher Hochschule der Künste, that is the ZHDK. She writes essays and reports for the Frankfurter Allgemeine and Neue Zürcher Zeitung. Now, after this brief introduction of the author, let me briefly explain to uh, all of you there uh, this uh, format of our engagement today uh, with one another, since it has, uh, well, uh, elements which till a few years ago would have been uh, pure science fiction. However, that fiction has now become our daily reality. For Diana, Diana Grigorcia will be in conversation with me while sitting in Zurich. I'm in Delhi, the festival organizers in Mumbai, and the audience has logged in from various parts of the global village. Therefore, to facilitate uh, your interaction with the author through questions or uh, there may be observations, you are requested to enter these in the chat box on the screen at your end. These will be collected and the author will respond to these after she finishes readings from the extracts of her two novels. Uh, the first novel that she will read from is titled An Instinctive Feeling of Innocence. This is her second novel. It was published in German as Das Primäre Gefühl der Schuldlosigkeit in 2015 by Dollermann Publishers. Subsequently, it was translated into English by Alta L. Price and published in 2019 by Seagull Publishing House, Calcutta. The second excerpt is from the yet to be launched novel by Penguin München on 8th March this year. So we will have her uh, novel, second novel being launched on Women's Day. And the novel in English is translated as Those Who Do Not Die, Those Who Won't Die, this is translated by Imogen Taylor from the original in German, which reads, Die nicht sterben. Uh, 
Uh, hello, Diana. Uh, good to uh, have you again here. It was a pleasure to hear you read from your work at the Long Night of Literature two years ago in Delhi, where we first met. Uh, now, before I request you to read the first excerpt from An Instinctive Feeling of Innocence, I will read from the jacket of the book so that the audience gets a gist of the plot. This is the book and I shall be reading from the jacket. An Instinctive Feeling of Innocence, translated by Alta L. Price into English. Victoria has just recently moved from Zurich back to her hometown of Bucharest when the bank where she works is robbed. Put on leave so that she can process the trauma of the robbery, Victoria strolls around town. Each street triggers sudden visions as memories from her childhood. Under the Ceausescu regime, begin to mix with the radically changed city and the strange world in which she now finds herself. As the walls of reality begin to crumble, Victoria and her former self cross paths with the bank robber and a rich cast of characters weaving a vivid portrait of Romania and one woman's self-discovery. In her stunning second novel, Swiss Romanian writer Dana Grigorcia paints a series of extraordinarily colorful pictures. With humor and wit, she describes a world full of myriad surprises where new and old cultures weave together, a world bursting with character and spirit. Dana, after this gist from the jacket of your novel, I would now request you to read the ex excerpt that you have chosen. Thank you. Thank you, Jyoti, for this nice introduction. Thank you for everybody for having me at this wonderful festival in Mumbai. I'm delighted to address again the Indian public, which is so dear to me. Um, I, uh, I hope in, in the future I will be able to address it uh, analog again. Uh, but now that we are online, um, I, I, uh, greet the public uh, around the world. Uh, um, so uh, nowadays uh, we are all able to connect online. Uh, um, online gives us the possibility of uh, meeting people who are far, far away. Um, well, I will read out of this book uh, that uh, has a wonderful cover. I have, I'm still as ecstatic uh, when I see it. Uh, it came out in Calcutta. And um, I will read a chapter um, that is about uh, Michael Jackson's uh, um, first uh, come to Bucharest after uh, the end of the dictatorship. He wanted to stand on a balcony and look out onto a Grand Boulevard. It was to be as massive as the one in Beijing, or even better, the one in Paris a Romanian Champs-Élysées to replace the old boyars' houses with their rotten roofs and unkempt gardens, wiping away the winding old alleyways where epidemics could break out at any moment. So the entire city quarter of Uranus atop Arsenal Hill was demolished, whereupon the city's 28 years old chief architect, whose thesis had been devoted to the urbanization of fellow lots, gave her comrades the good news that they now had free space to work with an area as big as Venice. As big as Venice, one comrade or another must have swooned. Venice. Bucharest Champs-Élysées had been known, or more accurately, not known, as the Boulevard of Socialist Victory. It was slightly shorter than its Parisian forerunner, but made up for it by being a full eight meters wider. 
Nicolae Ceaușescu never had the chance to bow solemnly down from that balcony, so Michael Jackson did it in his stead, complete with glittering white glove. This was three years after Ceausescu's execution during Michael's dangerous world tour. Back then, hardly anyone left home without their personal copy of his dangerous cassette. People carried them around just like the Chinese kept Mao's little red book on hand during the Cultural Revolution. Everyone who owned a cassette player, like we did, would play Jackson poker. You'd take a pencil or your finger and spin the tape to a random spot. Each player then had to guess what Michael would be singing when the music resumed. After everyone had placed their bets, the cassette was pushed into the recorder and the person whose guess was closest won the round. I never knew, but I was living in vain. She called my house. She said, you know my name. I had two copies of the dangerous cassette. I listened to one and kept the other hidden in a safe place in case the first one broke. Then, when CDs came along, my father bought me the album on CD in case we ever managed to buy a CD player. Well, this is a novel about uh, a city, about the city of Bucharest. And uh, I had uh, the nice surprise in Calcutta where after a reading to have a, a lady reader come to me and say, well, I read the book and this is actually a book about India. And I was uh, um, uh, bulversated. I uh, uh, long thought about what she could have uh, said uh, so what she could have meant with this and uh, now I think I know <laughs> it's it's a city about it's a novel about uh, um, a city changing very fast um, uh, every city is actually uh, an emotional map uh, and uh, when when a city changes so fast when the architecture changes when the streets we knew so well are, um, are no longer exist. Uh, what does this happen to, to one? What does this happen to a person? So this is what the novel is about. It's of course also a love triangle. It's about love. It's about coming home. It's about uh, um, corruption. There is always um, a bank robber who is uh, trying to rob a bank and fails. So this is a, um, a story about, uh, yeah, about robbery, about corruption, about the big robbers. And um, yeah, I am happy to, to have uh, reactions uh, from, from uh, the public now that the book has been uh, has been translated in a couple of languages. Okay, it has been uh, translated into quite a few languages. And after this reading, this question that comes, there are a few questions, in fact, that come to my mind. Uh, first of all, uh, why did you choose this particular excerpt, which is from chapter 20 of your novel? What is its relevance uh, to be chosen? Uh, is it uh, very vital for the implotment or uh, uh, this is a kind of depicts the kind of estrangement uh, which is felt uh, by the citizens of Bucharest uh, uh, who see their city change so fast, the impact of uh, 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 American pop culture or uh, architecture, as you said, or uh, uh, loss of um, relationships in the city which were there. Yes. Uh, could you just elaborate on this? Yes, thank you, Jyoti. It's about uh, it's about uh, this uh, 
uh, disappearance of uh, places we knew so well. Uh, so in communist times, in under the communist di dictatorship of Nicolae Ceausescu, uh, big quarters were demolished just to build up uh, uh, gigantesque uh, buildings uh, uh, for the uh, communist uh, regime, for for the nomenclatura. Uh, so uh, big, big. Um, um, quarters, parks uh, just disappeared, and um, I chose it because it's uh, it it uh, starts with the disappearance of a quarter, and it comes to Michael Jackson. It comes to a pop star, to a big pop star who arrives, you know, after the um, disappearance of the dictatorship, and uh, fills up this. Uh, this uh, empty space left by by the dictatorship with uh, with pop with uh, with the uh, art uh, and uh, um, and uh, michael jackson uh, further in the chapter will be um, will become a, a mystic figure so will become the archangel michael will become you know a saint for the people uh, who will see uh, really a fate uh, in his coming, and uh, will will uh, um, uh, be feeling uh, meant by by the uh, by Michael Jackson's uh, song texts, who are about uh, treason, about love, but most of all about treason. You know, in the um, in in a dictatorship, you you always fear treason to be um, to be given in by your um, by by your friends, by uh, your relatives. So uh, when when Michael Jackson th sings about uh, um, about uh, being uh, being uh, cheated on, people felt meant. Uh, when he sings about uh, feeling lonely, people have felt meant, and uh, mm -hmm. they uh, just start to to feel uh, the center of the universe. And then uh, um, at the end of the chapter, you know, Michael Jackson, uh, he, he appears, he, uh, he, he appears on stage uh, wearing uh, the um, uh, uniform of, uh, of a beloved king, Romanian king. So people really feel, look, this is our new ruler coming and they really uh, freak out. And then Michael Jackson greets the people and says, hello, Budapest, you know, Budapest. instead of Bucharest. <laughs> hello, Bucharest. Budapest, yeah. I love you. So, uh, yeah. and, and there, uh, then there's a big silence uh, people uh, people have a shock. They realize they are not meant in this love. Uh, so it's about uh, it's about people who have suffered a lot and who feel that uh, through their suffering they are they came to to the center of everything, to the center of the universe, and and um, and then they realize all of a sudden that they are not meant. That, that that people don't don't know about them you know mm. that what they lived don't have uh, doesn't have any sense uh, and any importance for others but only for themselves uh, uh. okay and you have placed your protagonist victoria between two cities yeah Zurich, where she works, and Bucharest, where she goes to heal from the trauma inflicted by the robbery at the bank where she works. Uh, why did you choose to do this? Why have you placed her between these two cities? Well, she, uh, she comes home. She comes home from Zurich which is a very civilized, a very quiet, a very uh, stable place, back to Bucharest, which is a um, city where everything changes very fast. So um, I, have, um, I have the theme of coming home, uh, this theme of uh, looking for the old places, um, uh, thinking about what, what 
the past meant, you know, when you come home, when you see old places, you start reflecting what, what the past really meant for you. Um, seeing, uh, seeing old friends. And uh, then I have all these destinies of the people, you know, um, in, in, the, in the communist period in, under the dictatorship. And I blow up what, what became of them, you know, um, how they changed, um, or, or how, how they, uh, they thought before and how they, they think now after, um, after the revolution in, in democracy, living in democracy, um, picked up the chance of this uh, great historical chance of this great historical change to fake their biographies, you know, to change, um, uh, to, to, uh, to make the appearance of always having been other persons. So it's also um, um, a story about uh, people who took profit um, of, of, uh, of, uh, uh, of the dictatorship and uh, who became uh, in the democracy big democrats of uh, people adapting to the times uh, of people uh, who always managed to be the winners of the times mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. so it and it's also a story about banks you know victoria is uh, working in a bank she she works in a bank in zurich where uh, so many um, dictators uh, bring uh, their money, their money. And brought their money to hide, to be hidden here, and um, and uh, where you don't feel this, so you don't feel yeah. that uh, unjust people come to Switzerland, that uh, money uh, robbed from poor people is uh, is brought here, because here. Um, Above this uh, Parade Platz, uh, uh, above all these uh, this uh, underground uh, the treasuries uh, where uh, the Eastern European uh, gold bars and money and uh, the African money and uh, Asian money is kept, uh, um, mm -hmm. there's a very civilized, uh, very quiet uh, um, uh, tram station and uh, um, flower shops and uh, uh, Sprüngli, which is a wonderful, uh, uh, wonderful uh, cafe and, uh, um, and uh, chocolate, um, chocolate shop. So yes. you have, you have this uh, antithesis of, uh, of justice and, and uh, lack of justice and corruption. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, while uh, reading uh, this novel, what I was I was quite amazed uh, how skillfully you have uh, blended elements of crime fiction, the city novel, with life writing. Life writing is now the uh, form, uh, the preferred form uh, in uh, fiction, and uh, you tell the story of the protagonist's self-discovery. While painting a vivid picture of, it's almost like paintings, you know, uh, screens of life in Bucharest before and after the fall of the socialist bloc Romania in 1989. Uh, is this a conscious attempt to break genre specific barriers? Or uh, as we were, we were chatting before we started, uh, or is it? Uh, to be attributed to the various hats that you wear as a journalist, fiction writer, a lecturer uh, in film studies, and now also a publisher. You have effortlessly uh, uh, crossed the boundaries of uh, uh, what you call professional structures. And uh, I don't know, I'm just asking. Uh, it is so skillfully done, it's seamless. Jyoti, I, I feel uh, really blessed to have a reader like you, you know, uh, 
I, I always hope to, to meet readers who uh, are able to discover so much in, in my books. And it's uh, really uh, in this moment that I realize I have put this in the novel. So I, that I have depicted uh, uh, scenes like, uh, like paintings uh, because I, I did just this in my, in my uh, uh, new novel who will come out uh, on the 8th of March in uh, Those Who Won't Die, um, where, where the, the main character is a painter. So actually, I, um, um, I, uh, I, I always uh, reflect on, on the art, on uh, the meaning of the art for our society, uh, on the art who should be in the center of our society. Uh, and I have, uh, I often have in my books, uh, artists as the uh, main characters. So in a novel, I have a, a ballet dancer who, uh, who did all the beautiful love, um, you know, movements on scene and then finally falls in love and asks herself what movements uh, can I can I um, can I uh, use for my real life? So what what uh, remains authentic for my real life uh, after doing everything on stage? And uh, and yes, and in in my uh, in my new novel, I have this uh, painter who is uh, a painter lady who is uh, um, living in this, uh, uh, cherishing the beauty of the art um, and is escaping the dictatorship and uh, all, the, um, all the black period of history by uh, finding refuge, you know, finding shelter in the art. Um, mm -hmm. So, the uh, art is always a uh, main topic, uh, but in this yes. uh, instinctive of innocence, I have uh, I have a banker as a main character, and I didn't mm. realize until now that you say it that I really depicted uh, depicted scenes uh, like paintings. I love uh, yes. I love to do this. <laughs> yeah. yeah, maybe you have uh, this uh, from films that you frame. Uh, uh, the episodes in the novel. Well, uh, uh, the go to the novel started talking about, there are a few questions from the audience, uh, which I think we should take now before we go on to the second reading. Uh, one question says, uh, where did you get the inspiration to write this novel? I have to remember. <laughs> Um, I, I, um, I, um, well, it was, it was when coming, uh, from Zurich, where I live now, uh, to Bucharest, to, uh, to the home of my parents, uh, looking out of the window and, um, having, uh, a, a sensation like a, like a faint, you know, the, the I, I had the impression that the, the, um, uh, the architecture, the uh, the dimensions around me um, changed. That the trees had another um, height. That the houses had a different height than I remembered it. And um, and I started thinking about uh, this um, emotional dimension um, that uh, that uh, we have in in architecture. That. Um, and about uh, the fact that the uh, the city map, a city map, um, is uh, actually also an emotional map. I started thinking of my grandmother who uh, walked with me uh, uh, around uh, the city and used to say, "Yes, here, you know, I came with a uh, with a carriage, you know." Uh, with the horses uh, to, to drink a coffee at this corner. And you know, and the, the place was totally different. So actually you had to project, really project uh, a coffee shop at, uh, um, at, at that corner. And uh, uh, it was difficult for me as a child, but uh, now that I, I walk around 
the city, um, all this um, uh, all these recounts of my grandmother, all her story, uh, overlap on on my my uh, um, my experiences in the city, and and then there's a third layer with what it is today at that place. So um, if you come, if you return to a place you know very good. Um, it can be very emotional because at every corner uh, there's a story. There's a story that had been told to you. There's a story that you uh, lived yourself or there's a, and there's a story you see the moment you look. Um, and uh, mm -hmm. this, uh, this uh, confrontation with the architecture gives you the chance to reflect on the history. Uh, to reflect that uh, um, the history that changed the city and to reflect on how we behaved, how we people behaved in, in, um, during this change, how we, um, how we lost chances, missed chances, or how we uh, act well, you know. So it's, uh, it's a story about the architecture, about uh, places, and it's a story about uh, um, about politics, about how we act, how we um, get to have chances, how we, um, uh, you know, use the chances or how we miss them. Mm -hmm. uh, the second question uh, is uh, related to the protagonist. It reads, who is the protagonist if there is any? And I think I'll link it up with the second question too. Uh, there, uh, the uh, the uh, it is asked is you are being thanked for the reading. I love the idea that many stories that are woven through the story of the city. How old do you see the protagonist as she visits the city? Um. The, uh, there, uh, there's a hint uh, um, in, the, um, in the beginning of the novel how old she is. Uh, she says, uh, because of my name, Victoria, everybody uh, thinks I'm te 10 years younger than I am. And this is because uh, at the revolution, a lot of children were, um, were um, given the name Victor of Victoria, mm -hmm. you know, from Victor. And uh, there was an atmosphere of hope um, at that time. So she was, uh, she is my age. She was 10 when, uh, when the revolution uh, happened. And um, uh, she, she, was, uh, she was about, uh, um, about uh, three, uh, 13 years old when Michael Jackson came uh, to Romania when Michael Jackson um, made this big mistake of calling Bucharest Budapest. Um, and uh, a, a mistake that really traumatized not only the generation that was present there, but also the coming generations, you know, with this, uh, uh, with, with this, uh, uh, with this thought of not being uh, important of not having any importance uh, of uh, of being uh, uh, um, not in the center of Europe but uh, at the margin and uh, mm -hmm. um, and uh, now yes that that she comes back she's uh, she's uh, an adult uh, lady so uh, she's she's my age uh, you. Um, so and, the uh, elements of life writing. So the elements of right, yes, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and it was funny. Uh, I have also a story um, in it. So she she falls out of time. You know, when walking through the city, uh, she remembers. Uh, uh, she remembers uh, um, also stories from her past. So um, how how it was. To, to be chosen uh, uh, to, um, as a child to give the flowers to uh, the, the dictator. Um, 
and uh, it was funny because when the book came out in uh, in in german uh, many people uh, um, uh, took this as my biography and asked me yes so tell me more details <laughs> so uh, it was a pleasure it was uh, actually uh, um, very funny for me when writing the book to uh, you know, to mix up uh, stories, personal stories with uh, with uh, fantasy and uh, to make uh, this lady uh, a symbol actually for her generation. So it's me, but it's me um, as it is also all um, all my, my whole generation. Mm -hmm. Okay, the other the next question is the presence of Arch angel Michael Jackson is funny and sad. Uh, well, Jackson in brackets. Do you think this relationship with the pop star could occur without the void created by change in the city? No, of course not. So he really came um, when people longed for a meaning, when people really... Um, longed for for a new ruler you know for uh, um, for, also for a charismatic uh, ruler and then uh, pop came just like uh, you know he came with the rhythm he came with joy he came with charm he came with the mystery he came from far away he came from America so he had all and he he dressed up in the in the uniform of a uh, beloved uh, Romanian king so uh, so so actually he had all the characteristics of uh, uh, you know of uh, in a very very um, of, a, of a person full of light you know full of uh, uh, full of uh, who, who came to give meaning to all this uh, uh, this historical drama that Romanian Romania uh, managed to surpass um, and uh, yeah it's funny and sad <laughs> it's funny be, it's fun it's really funny but when I when I read this chapter um, it's about uh, uh, 25 minutes uh, to read it when I read this chapter everybody laughs so I had laughters uh, um, in all uh, in in uh, um, the Netherlands, in uh, France, everywhere in, in uh, Russia, everywhere where I read about Michael Jackson, you know, uh, actually not knowing where he really is and not actually not being interested where he is because he he traveled so much. Um, and uh, it was funny because uh, I had uh, readings in America and in America people didn't laugh. <laughs> when I oh. read this, this uh, uh, end, you know, when Michael Jackson said, hello, Budapest, uh, I love you. So people didn't laugh. He, people only yeah. laugh when I looked up and said, you know, the capital of uh, Romania is Bucharest. Yes. So yes. he made a mistake. <laughs> and then the people laughed, you know, <laughs> but, uh, but uh, then I realized, yes, it's actually, it's... Uh, uh, Romania, it's a small, uh, really small, uh, unimportant country at the end of the world. So uh, we, we uh, Romanians know a lot about the world um, and, and uh, consider that the world knows a lot about them. Mm -hmm. Okay, the next two questions, I'll just take them together because they are uh, related to uh, the craft of writing. Uh, uh, the first question is multilingual. You write in German. Do you write in any other languages? And the second question is, is it really the writer's imagination or the experience that counts when you want to write? Tricky. Yes. 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 Very nice questions. Thank you a lot for, for them. Um, I, uh, yes, I, uh, um, I started writing in Romania. Um, and uh, I uh, made my debut uh, with uh, Romania with short stories in Romanian. And when uh, when I uh, lived in Austria during my study, I I started, you know, to 
translate my short stories for um, other writers I corresponded with, I uh, um, um, visited, uh, and um, by by uh, during the translation, I thought, yeah, but why why uh, um, do I make so much um, such an effort to translate myself? I I I could uh, just write new stories in uh, in German, and uh, so I started writing in German, and um, you actually I think I think um, a lot more. Maybe maybe the majority of the writers uh, um, like to to have a direct audience, you know, to write in the language of the people around them. So mm -hmm. um, I, actually, it, it wouldn't make any sense to to write in a language um, that is not of the of the pe people next to, to to me, you know. So. Uh, in uh, Switzerland, where where I live now, uh, you have lots of uh, literary houses, lots of uh, readings, lots of uh, um, a big interested public, and uh, it would be a, a little bit um, for um, um, for me. I would I would uh, uh, I would. Uh, mm, I, I I would go. Uh, you know, go, go back. I I won't. I wouldn't mingle with the with the, with my next public. You know, with the, um, uh, if I would write in a language they don't understand. Uh, so um, I uh, that's why I write in in German because I I like to have a quick reaction on what I wrote from <laughs> from the people physically uh, the next being physically uh, the next to me. Now, of course, this mm -hmm. question uh, is new in pandemics, in times of pandemics, where we all, uh, uh, you know, uh, have our public uh, next uh, with a click, very <laughs> next, but uh, um, um, very near um, in our homes. But uh, but uh, in times when I started writing German, it was really, you know, uh, I... I um, would have had to send uh, my manuscript with the letter, you know, with the post to to Romania to to uh, uh, to find the public, and then I would uh, I would get the answers, the reaction by post, you know. So I preferred to have it uh, right away, to have the reaction right away. And um, I studied the German. I studied. Uh, I. Uh, uh, went to the German school in Romania, so it was uh, um, actually for uh, for the city children, you know, for um, the for the middle class. Uh, um, it was um, um, it was a tradition to to have their children educated uh, with a foreign language. So the foreign language, my first foreign language, was German. Um, we have mm -hmm. also in Romania a German minority, so there are German yes. schools. So it wasn't a difficulty to write in German. But when I lived mm -hmm. in France, you know, I considered writing in, Fra uh, in French. <laughs> and uh, um, it's, it's a play, you know, it's a play to, with language. You, uh, you switch languages and you write in the language of, uh, um, of writers you love. So I wrote in Romanian, and I I, I thought uh, of myself being in dialogue, in direct dialogue with all the Romanian writers I love. And when I switched languages and I started writing in German, I I really felt like I was continuing something. Um, uh, literature um, started by writers I I cherish, um, and. Uh, yeah, so it would have been with Fra uh, with the French language, but I only lived for a year in France, so <laughs> it wasn't time enough. Um, but I I stick to to the German language, and uh, I um, I'm always very happy when I am trans translated. So um, then I go with the translated books to to the countries I'm translated to, and uh, then I have a reaction 
of um, of a public i i get to know uh, through their reactions on my literature which is a great mm -hmm. gift mm -hmm. well we shall continue this conversation after we uh, have you read from the second novel today which is uh, in german die nicht sterben and in english it is those who won't die translated by imogen taylor and it will be launched it is yet to be launched on 8th march on women's day diana on women's day they will be launching your uh, novel yeah yes. great and uh, now i uh, request you to uh, start the reading from uh, those who won't die thank you i resume writing here after substantial doubts about my ability to tell this story led me to interrupt my work for a while. I had begun to doubt my memory. And it became clear to me that I hadn't been paying attention at the time, or not at any rate to the events I had taken it upon myself to relate. I had thought this was my story, because it happened to me. But the, that fact could also imply a certain responsibility, a duty that had fallen to me at some long forgotten point in the past. Countless times I have read that what I wrote about being able to pay, play around with the order of events because no order makes sense. But it seems to me now that the opposite is true and that any order makes sense as it is not a matter of cause and effect, but of fate. Yet wasn't that precisely what I was trying to dispute in my writing, that saltifying notion that we are all subject to some fate and powerless to defy it? There was another torturously long wait, a time of what I feared would prove invincible lethargy. I cannot describe it. How could I begin to write about it? But now I have made up my mind. I will write the way I can. I will write as if I were painting a scene on a wall, a Valachian fresco with a certain demon in the middle. There we all were, then, high on the narrow path, afraid to move. The river rushed below us and we shivered from damp as well as fear. I seem to remember that we were silent for a long time, but then we began to talk quickly, a lot of nonsense and silly jokes. That crude joke about the bear who wipes his bum with little animals and ends up reaching for the hedgehog. Somebody burst into tears. And there was an argument too, but I've forgotten who argued and what they argued about, some trifle or another. I could, of course, surmise that it was because of this argument that Madame Didina turned away, but then I'd be blaming somebody when nobody was to blame. Madame Didina simply slipped. Any of us could have done the same. She fell and fell. I saw her, very small in the distance, rolling head over heels down the hill before she vanished into the ground mist. interesting um, and witty at the same time i mean you have uh, this ability to uh, when a certain kind of a nostalgia is being built up to then again uh, deflate it by bringing in uh, uh, your uh, very very uh, apt sense of humor uh, which is uh, which intersperses all the episodes uh, that i have read of this novel too. Uh, but here you see you are shifting ground. Uh, the, this novel too is set in Romania, but it is not the city. It's not the city. In fact, it is an anonymous uh, place called B, uh, just the B. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is described as a place where people love to go for their, to spend their vacation. And here too, the protagonist comes from Paris, again from outside Romania, 
to seek solace at the place at the home of her grand aunt uh, uh, who is described as being an epitome of uh, the upper bourgeoisie of romania uh, very disdainful of uh, the uh, the communist kitsch which is uh, in the flat in the house and she just gets it removed and this whole atmosphere is built and then you bring in again this trope of mystery you know the mystery novel the death and first and foremost i would say that here you are going back to this age old folklore romanian folklore of uh the dracula figure or the nosferatu yeah which is part of romanian folklore this is the myth of dracula as he is perceived today and the quote is in, in the novel in the beginning is by uh bram stammer and uh this vlad tepes was actually the historical vlad tepes was the uh, valachian king uh who ruled from 1456 to 1476 and for political reasons he was depicted by some historians of that time as a bloodthirsty ruthless despot yeah so here we have the despot and personified again the myth of the contemporary myth of the dracula its reporting a uh, description of the grave descriptions of the forest uh, and uh, some uh, supernatural phenomena is also uh, uh, woven in now uh, can you uh, 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 tell us what inspired you to structure the narrative of the novel around this very very romanian folklore it's a it's a novel about uh, about the undying themes of our society uh, so themes that we thought to be long uh, overcome you know uh, themes as nationalism chauvinism uh, um, revendication you know um, revenge and uh, uh, which are coming up again and we um it's it's awkward that they come up again because we thought we have learned out of them that we have surpassed this uh, this uh, uh, dark periods of history uh, but uh, here we are again uh, uh, confronted with the same themes of history and uh, it's um, the novel has um, ha is is um, so the story is told by uh, uh, this uh, lady pen um, um artist uh, she's a painter um who spends her uh summer vacation in the house of uh, her great aunt with um who who belongs as you said to the to the bourgeoisie so she uh, she gets her house uh, back uh, um her nationalized uh, house um, back uh, after the the fall of uh, the communist di dictatorship and um, she changes uh, she changes uh, um, the furniture she she brings a lot of art art books uh, uh, in the house and uh, and our main character lives you know lives there to enjoy art to enjoy the bucolic life outside to enjoy um, the nature uh, the mountains and uh, she she long time um, doesn't see the poverty that surrounds them you know the the grief of the people of the um, simple people who live uh, in, in that place uh, um, uh, who, and uh, it's it's only in the moment where when a uh, when a uh, um, corpse a uh, 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 very a mutilated corpse is discovered on uh, her family grave that she um, she she starts to see uh to 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 see the present and to see that uh, that uh, the place uh, um has been has been ruined by corruption um that there are lots of ruins ruins uh, um you know uh, lots of people uh, uh, left 
uh, Romania went to, to work abroad, to, uh, to gain their existence abroad, tried to come back and build up a house, but then uh, in, lack of, in lack of money, they, they left again and left what they have built as ruins behind. So it's a, I, I describe how this atmosphere, this atmosphere who becomes uh, darker and darker. It's uh, like a, a, in a Dracula novel, you know, it's, it's there, it's something wrong, but you don't, you can't name it. Um, it's, there's an atmosphere, a, some, something dark coming up um, and there's a fear in the atmosphere, but you, you, um, you don't know whether you dreamt it or whether it's real uh, you can't believe it's it's there and um, and then uh, um, um, you know in the um, in, in Romanian society and not only in Romanian society there's uh, this outcry for the uh, for the strong hand for the great ruler who will bring a stability who will uh, uh, who will punish the thieves who will uh, um, you know who the, the act, actually uh, a dictator, um, a bloody ruler who who will punish the, um, uh, the the bad and uh, will bring order. And uh, this is uh, this is uh, Vlad Tepes. This is uh, Vlad the Impaler, as he was uh, uh, known in history in the history of uh, Romanian Middle Ages and uh, he became the main character in Bram Stoker's Dracula. Now he used to impale um, the, the thieves and uh, the ill-doers. He used to put them on a, on, a, on a stick, you know, it was a very, very bloody, um, a very um, a cruel way uh, to be executed. Um, and uh, so the people, uh, the, uh, the people uh, long for such a strong hand, and in the end, he really comes. So he really comes, um, this strong ruler. But uh, um, but the uh, the uh, the main character realizes it's not what would bring us peace. So you can't, as the Martin Luther King said you can't uh, um, uh, combat dar darkness with darkness only only with light so um, you can't fight the bad with bad you know you it's only with with the good um, so this is how the story ends <laughs> it's a spoiler now <laughs> so it's uh, <laughs> well realizing uh, uh, Dana, it was a real delight to have you here and especially to have the privilege of uh, getting to read excerpts from, uh, from a book or novel that is yet to be launched. I think uh, all the yes. whole audience yes. is uh, in this position of privilege and uh, we wish you all the best for the 8th of March when uh, your novel is launched. And uh, uh, the last question is that I mean you that it seems that you work very closely with your translators because uh, the I have read both the German and the English and I think your uh, translators have uh, got the absolute the layers and the nuances of uh, the original absolutely right uh, the the whole tone is perfect and uh, well. Uh, with this, uh, sitting in Zurich, I wish you all the best and I hope you come again once some kind of semblance of normalcy comes back to the world. Yeah, and uh, we uh, meet again in real space and have you sit in front of us and uh, read from your novels. And I'm, ho I hope, I'm sure there'll be many more to come, many more themes that you are working on and the empathy which in your non-fictional work you have written about, about empathy, which you see is uh, as the task of the writer is to evoke this empathy in the reader. And I hope you continue 
to evoke this empathy in your readers. Thank you very much. And now I'd request uh, Indira Chandrasekhar to say a few concluding remarks. Well, thank you so much. There's so much I'd like to say in response to this wonderful session, so beautifully moderated, Jyoti, and such an exciting, uh, uh, really, readings, uh, really, really wonderful. Uh, I'm the Curator of Literature at the Kalagoda uh, Arts Festival. I wish I could chat for longer, but we're out of time. I do want to thank uh, the Swiss uh, Consulate General in Mumbai, Swiss Next Pro Helvetia, the Embassy of Switzerland, for giving us this opportunity to be able to listen to Dana Gregorchen. I hope we are able to stay in touch and read each other's work over the years. Thank you.